Hey everyone, it's Josh with EIS Automation. Today we'll do our second video on electronic gearing. Every once in a while we get into fun little projects like this and we love to share them with you. Uh, perhaps you have an application in house where that could be helpful for you. Or if you just want to learn something and dig a little deeper, feel free to, to reach out to us and we can start a conversation about this. Um, the system consists of, and Ashley will zoom in now, uh, standard controls enclosure. We have regular power distribution. We have a DC power supply. All our systems are equipped with a E1 Cozy for remote support so we can remotely service the system, download new software, or just help uh, troubleshoot if there's an issue. We have an NX1P2 Omron PLC uh, and motion controller with an EtherCAT. We have a feedback module, high-speed counter for the external encoder. And of course, at the heart of the system is our dual axis servo drives. We have a 400 watt Omron servo drive and a 750 watt Omron servo drive connected via EtherCAT and then to the PLC. Of course, each electronic gear, gear has an external encoder. In this case, we have a surface mount encoder with a 200 millimeter circumference uh, wheel. And to control the system, we have an Omron touch screen. Uh, we will deliver the system just like it is here, the way you see it, and the customer can mount that HMI wherever he would like. Part of the system, of course, is the two motors that correspond to the drive. In this case, we have a 800 watt motor with a 10 to one inline gearhead and a 400 watt motor with a 10 to one inline gearhead. That uh, was a customer request for their mechanical system. These two motors will eventually drive at the customer side to conveying systems that need to be electronically geared to a source conveyor. So they basically follow. Um, so what does an electronic gear do? You basically take an external encoder and mount it onto your source. And as the encoder turns, you can variably adjust the following revolutions of the motors that come with our system. And I'm going to uh, show this to you or demonstrate this rather. When we boot into the system, it will automatically be in follow mode. You have, of course, jog functions, anything. So you can jog each axis as you would like. A1 is axis 1, A2 axis 2. And we also have a few outputs you can configure if you'd like to switch certain things on and off once the motor starts turning. But in order to make it follow, you adjust the gear ratio for both motors. In this case, axis uh, 2 is disabled. So what we can do is if we want both of them to follow, we're going to go to settings. I'm going to put the pin in. And I'm going to enable axis 2 so both of them will follow. And now we have a gear ratio. So now both of these motors, once I enable them into run mode, will follow the electronic gear and the encoder exactly. So we are in run mode now. We have a 100% gear ratio. And you'll see as soon as I turn the encoder that the motors will follow one to one or 100%. So. And of course, that's bidirectional. So one thing to note, unlike a mechanical gear, an electronic gear will not change your torque. If you change the ratio mechanically with the gearhead, that will change your torque output. In this case, we have a 10 to 1 ratio uh, mechanical gearhead on there. So the 1.2 newton meters from the motor multiplied times 10 gives you 12 newton meter output. But the ratio on the digital gear or the electronic gear will not influence the torque. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say we would like these motors to only follow, let's say, 10% of the revolution on axis number one, but 200% on axis two. So what you should see is that axis one turns really slow, only 10% of what I'm uh, simulating with my hand on the encoder, but axis two should go twice as fast. So I'm going to go back into run mode and start the operation. And if we program this correctly, that should be the case now. As you can see, axis one on the orange only turns 
and axis two turns 200. For those of you who are interested in how to program something like this, our programmer, Simon, um, in this case, exclusively uses structured text. That's one of the languages out of the IEC 611 suite. Um, you could do this in, in ladder diagram or function blocks. Simon, our programmer, just prefers structured text because he comes out of the .NET world and writes also a lot of Windows applications. So I hope this was helpful. Again, if you have an application where you'd like to drive something that follows a source, or if you want to learn more about uh, electronic gearing, feel free to shoot me an email, reach out to us. We're more than happy to help. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.